Cambridge Technical Level 3. This is Unit 2, LO2, PowerPoint 2. This PowerPoint focuses on discrimination. In health, social care and childcare, you will come into contact with many people from a wide variety of different um, backgrounds and walks of life. It's important that these people that you meet are not discriminated against. It's essential that you examine and reflect on your own attitudes and beliefs to ensure that you do not unfairly discriminate against the individuals that you are responsible for caring for. It is important to realise that there are two main forms of discrimination. There is direct and indirect discrimination. It is vital for the exam that you are aware of the differences between the both. Um, direct discrimination involves intentionally putting someone at a disadvantage or treating them unfairly, quite openly, based on their differences. For example, a woman is told that she did not get the job because she is female and this, is, this means that she is a victim of direct uh, discrimination, which would also be a form of sex discrimination. Then there is indirect discrimination, which isn't always um, easily to, easy to spot. It's when a policy, practice or rule applies to everybody, but it has a detrimental effect on some people. Uh, the discrimination is accidental or unintentional. For example, if a job, a, a job advertisement stated that male applicants must be clean shaven, this would discriminate against men whose religious beliefs prevent shaving their beards off. Abuse. Now we have looked at abuse in detail on another PowerPoint and the different forms of abuse, but it's really important to understand um, almost definitions of the different types of abuse and the signs and symptoms that you should be looking out for. Um, because as a health, social care and a childcare worker, there may be times when you come across different forms of abuse and you, it's really important that you can spot these early so that something could be done about it. So abuse is the mistreatment of a service user by one or more people, which violates the service user's civil, legal or human rights. Now, I would make sure that definition is copied down and I would make sure that you're fully aware of the definition of abuse. Abuse can take many forms and the impact on the service user, their family and the wider community can be devastating. Young children that have been abused often uh, never, ever get over it. Um, it forms a, a form of PTSD as they grow older. Uh, certain triggers can set it off again. Um, you've got to be able to recognise the signs and symptoms of abuse or neglecting and acting appropriately. It's the responsibility of all um, care workers. For the exam, the types of abuse you need to know are physical abuse, verbal abuse, psychological stroke emotional abuse, sexual abuse and neglect. It might be worth stopping the PowerPoint now and having a go at writing um, down a definition uh, without, without checking the other slides. So have a right definition yourself of what each of these mean. Then you could also add to it some of the signs and symptoms you think um, might be related to these forms of abuse. Have a go at this before you move on to the next slides. So the first type of abuse that I will focus on is neglect. Neglect is when a service users are not being met. Uh, an example of this could be in a hospital where food is left where a service user can't access it. So food is left by the healthcare assistant on a tray. Um, the service user is unable to feed themselves and the healthcare assistant doesn't support them in any way. This could lead to them uh, being malnutrition, uh, sorry, being in the end of malnutrition, um, and, and it is a form of abuse. Um, other types are, they, these are a little bit more easier to spot, especially in children. They could have poor cleanliness, so they might have dirty faces, dirty hair, uh, unclean clothes, stains on them, food on them that's been on there for days, and poor personal hygiene, so you might notice that they're smelling. Um, and these are quite easy to spot. Um, however, sometimes there is no physical signs of neglect. Uh, it's a failure to protect a vulnerable person, or a vulnerable individual from emotional harm. That's what neglect is. We all have a basic need for warmth, food, clean clothing. And if they are not being met, this is a form of, of neglect. Physical abuse. 
This includes aggressive acts such as hitting, punching, pushing or burning. These, believe it or not, are not always easy to spot. The abuser can try to hide their physical acts of aggression, for example, punching and burning the stomach, the torso, the top of the legs, places where it's not easy, where they're not often on show and can be easily hidden with a t-shirt. Um, also, a form of physical abuse is using medication to subdue the service user. For example, a dementia patient that regularly cries out at night. If a, um, a nurse or a healthcare assistant gives medication that would sedate the patient or sedate the service user um, without it being requested, then this is a form of abuse. Physical abuse can also include force feeding, slapping or breaking bones by an inappropriate movement. For example, forcing a service, arm as, uh, service user's arm into a sleeve awkwardly and fracturing the arm. I think if you look at the documentary Behind Closed Doors, there are lots of examples where there is slapping um, and trying to get people into their clothes roughly that could have caused harm and bruising. Um, if you have a service user with aggressive behaviour, uh, you shouldn't retaliate with aggressive behaviour. You should read their care plan and the strategies that have been put in place to prevent you getting harmed and ways in which you can support the service user uh, without them also being put at harm. Psychological abuse. This often happens behind closed doors. And it can be caused by someone behaving in a way as to cause a psychological trauma to the person that they are communicating with. Um, in health, social care and child care, you may notice a change in the person that you're caring for. For example, they may become very anxious, depressed, withdrawn. Um, and this can be a sign of psychological abuse. It can lead to conditions such as anorexia. It can lead to anxiety and depression. Emotional abuse can include threatening to withdraw affection if the person does not behave in a particular way. This can be seen in domestic violence. It, it could be that they're acting in an inconsistent way. Sometimes they're very affectionate and loving, and sometimes they are not. Very, they could be very aggressive, very nasty, uh, name calling, putting them down. They could threat, uh, they could make the threat of punishment. They can say hurtful things to exercise control over that person. Uh, very coercive relationships um, and yet this can be just as detrimental as someone that has been physically or sexually abused. Verbal abuse may also include using language that a service user will find disrespectful, um, such as using the C word or swearing, shouting or threatening a service user, criticising a service user. They can focus on trying to humiliate them, belittling them, deliberately undermining them and deliberately embarrassing a service user by disclosing private information about them. Verbal abuse can also be name calling, insults, swearing, anything that humiliates someone or reduces their dignity, embarrasses them, make them feel insecure. Um, an example could be a care assistant in a residential home using foul language and raising her voice because the resident is taking too long to finish the meal when a carer wants to go off duty. That is an example of verbal abuse. Sexual abuse is forcing a person to take part in sexual behaviour for which they have no desire to. Um, it does not have to include touching genitalia. It can be non-touching activities, but also of a but of a sexual nature. Um, rape does not just have to be the physical uh, process of a man inserting his penis into a woman's vagina. There are other, other ways that rape can be done, such as digitally uh, with, with your um, fingers. There's, there's so many ways in which people can be raped or sexually abused that doesn't involve the full sexual act. Um, sexual activity where the individual does not give consent is, is a form of sexual abuse. You'll need to be aware of the signs of sexual activity without the consent of service users with complex needs as they may be unaware themselves that the abuse has occurred. So people that are very vulnerable, people that have got learning needs, uh, or learning difficulties, severe learning difficulties may not realise that they have been sexually abused. We now move on to financial abuse. This is a posh name for saying that you are stealing money of somebody else, um, defrauding them of their money or property. So it could be that in a care residential care home, there is a carer that is 
daily stealing money from a resident's purse or a domiciliary care worker working in a home of an elderly person that is uh, has gained their trust and is stealing things from their house including money from their purse um, it doesn't just have to be a care worker it can be a friend or family member um, or even a power of attorney uh, when somebody is given the legal authority to make decisions on their behalf they could abuse that um, trying to get uh, uh, trying to have a financial benefit from that so we have a research task so you're going to have to stop the powerpoint for a bit and you're going to research the cases of abuse at Hillcroft Nurf Nursing Home, Stafford Hospital and Orchid View Care Home or other recent abuse scandals that you may be aware of. And I want you to tell me for each of those three, what type of abuse occurred, the reasons why these incidents of, ab of abuse happened and what could the care setting have done to prevent them from happening? So that is what I want you to research, three of these different cases. And then once you've done that and made your notes, you may move on from the PowerPoint. We are now gonna look at other forms of discrimination, prejudice, stereotyping, labeling, and bullying. It's important that you write these down. So prejudice is when someone has a negative attitude towards or an unfair dislike of an individual or a group of people. It's important this is highlighted and it's important that this is revised. You must know the difference between prejudice, stereotyping, etc. So prejudice is often based on ill-informed opinions or inaccurate information. Uh, examples include racial prejudice or punishment of people because of their sexual orientation. Stereotyping involves making judgments about individuals or groups of people based on prejudice. It means making unfair assumptions that people with certain characteristics are the same. For example, girls are better behaved than boys or midwives are always women. Um, other examples are French always wear berets or old people are always frail. Labelling can be very similar to stereotypes. It means to identify people negatively as part of a particular group, such as old people, young people. The assumption is that they are all the same. For example, all older, older adults are frail and need to be looked after. All youngsters are troublemakers. Um, some older adults are indeed frail and need support. However, many adults continue to live independently into their 90s. We now move on to bullying, which I'm sure some of you have experienced throughout your life. Um, you may not. It's not just something that happens in childhood. It can be something that that happens in adulthood, too. It's important to know that bullying describes a range of negative behaviours that can humiliate or harm individuals. It can involve humiliating, insulting or harassing someone by constantly criticising them, making inappropriate comments or repeating offensive jokes and nicknames. It may be carried out by somebody who is in a position of power, such as a manager, supervisor or carer, and it may involve bullying another care worker. or even bullying service users. So who can be affected by discrimination? Um, discriminatory practice doesn't just have to affect the service users. It can affect anyone within a health, social care and childcare environment, not just those that use the services. Hospital practitioners may be subject to discriminatory practice from the supervisor, from the patient or from the patient's family. Uh, another example is a child attender in a nursery may be discriminated against by the nursery staff or other children or even their families. Here is an example of or a table of who could be affected by discriminatory practice. This is only a small list. This, it could be much bigger than this. But these are the examples of three main groups of individuals who can be affected by discriminatory practice. So what are the impacts on an individual? You only have to look at it when you've been discriminated against or someone has said something negatively about you and how you feel. Um, it can affect your physical, intellectual, emotional and social well-being. And it can lead to health problems um, such as high blood pressure because of the stress and social exclusion because you might be too frightened to go out because of the discrimination that you've received. Discrimination can cause um, disempowerment. Which is the opposite of empowerment? Empowerment is about giving people choice, um, helping people feel in control of their life, um, helping them remain independent, whereas disempowerment is the opposite of that. Individuals who suffer discrimination can feel disempowered. They can feel like a lack of control in their life. 
um, particularly if you've got somebody that's in a residential care home where they're dependent on a carer who is abusing them and they may feel that it's there nothing they can do they could feel helpless other ways that discrimination can make you feel is you could feel low self-esteem and low self-confidence self-esteem and self-confidence can be destroyed by discrimination leaving an individual feeling absolutely worthless as if they uh, have have no place in the world discrimination can make people feel unwell um, they may become withdrawn isolate themselves to avoid the situation they found themselves in they could feel frightened about further discrimination and ill treatment meaning that they start to socially isolate um, themselves away from others health problems can develop so they could get high blood pressure anxiety uh, their condition if they have an illness already their condition could worsen um, intellectually a nurse that's being bullied in the workplace for example could lose concentration so anyone that is facing discrimination could lose uh, the concentration socially they could become withdrawn and not work or they could get easily upset with colleagues or patients not making the most effective person to be caring for them emotionally it could reduce confidence and it could affect self-esteem and self-confidence um, it could have a negative impact on their mental health and cause depression and anxiety. So there is a hell of a lot of impacts uh, from discriminating against somebody. And these should be considered. You need to write these down. You need to make sure you remember these different impacts um, because they could well turn up in your exam. To finish this um, PowerPoint, I'd like you to read up on a newspaper article, Former Male Nurse Wins Sex Discrimination Case. I'd like you to Google that. I'd like you to describe the discriminatory practice that Mr. Moying experienced. I want you to look at what assumptions were the basis for the discriminatory practice and what has been the impact of this discriminatory practice. Make sure you make notes on this and we'll have a look at them next lesson. Finally, without looking at the other slides, I would like you to do a quick uh, quiz, a um, memory test. Um, and I'd like you to answer these questions as quickly as you possibly can. So I'd find a piece of lined paper. I would pause the PowerPoint and I would have a go by yourself first to answer these questions. So number one is explain the difference between direct and indirect discrimination and give an example of each. And then uh, make sure, definitely make sure you've got this, uh, an example of each because that will help you when you come around to revise. Then name and give an example of four types of abuse. So you need to give that example that's very important. And in your own words, write a definition of the following terms. Now, some of this you will need to recall from PowerPoint um, LO2, PowerPoint 2 um, to refresh your memory. So what is social class? What is prejudice? What is culture? Disempowerment. That should be a nice, easy one because we've just covered that one. And what is ageism? And once you've done that, keep your notes for the next lesson. Good luck and I shall see you soon.